All right, let's get down to business. Dojo Cat is Sarah Jane. Now, before I get into that whole sentence or or that whole statement, um, I'd like to talk about colorism. Colorism is something that is real, something that is always at play in every situation. It has become ingrained in our society. When something is societal, it doesn't just go away just because people say, oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. It still happens. People think that prostitution's bad. You could go to any official person and they'd be like, oh, that's horrible. It's horrible. But they solicit prostitutes. So no matter what they say out of their mouth, it, I only care about actions. And even you have to take into account what's coming out of their mouth because you could say, okay, that's contradictory to what your actions are. Or you could say that's exactly what your actions are. You Everything comes into play and people don't understand that. You can respect a situation and, and give people a chance while at the same time looking at past and current behavior. And I think that's what people think with this whole cancel culture thing that's going on. First, um, there I really don't like that word cancel culture because no one's getting canceled. It's just a fad. It's a fade. It's something that people say to sound, it's cute to say oh you canceled no one has gotten canceled you know who really got canceled really Roseanne Barr and I don't hear anybody talking about that situation everyone's talking about oh Johnny Depp this and that Johnny Depp was never canceled he may have lost jobs and opportunities but he still got a bankroll coming in from everything every time you see Pirates of the Caribbean royalty is like I really don't understand what Roseanne canceled her show still runs, but she doesn't get that money. They cut her off like They that whole situation They cut her off Off completely off and that's interesting how that happened Because it goes into colorism The girl the woman that she was speaking about the planet of the apes and all that she was light-skinned and don't you know that she speaks about a light-skinned black woman, and now she lost her whole show. Her whole show was it was called Roseanne. Everyone, she was like, "How are you gonna make Roseanne without me?" Oh yeah, we're calling it the Connors. That's what we're gonna do, Roseanne. We're gonna call it the Connors because that's your last name. Everybody else is here. Jackie's here. Good old time. Good old buddy. Like David's here. They even brought back not Becky and Becky. They didn't need her. Everyone was. Like, oh, we should call it the, we should call it Darlene. Like, no, we shouldn't call it Darlene. Darlene is the best part. I'm, I'm getting off track a little bit. I will make a video about Roseanne and how I really love that show and how Roseanne was kind of done wrong in the show. Not outside. In, in the show, I mean, she was done wrong by her family. All of them. All of them. But I digress. Back to colorism. There are always token black women used to spread a certain narrative, whether it be uh, the loud, obnoxious, big, or the the dainty, cute one that everyone gets to kiki with. Like Nia Long is one of those types of girls. She's played. I really think that she's on the darker side of what they accept, though. Like, she is the precipice. Like, that's as dark as they'll go when it comes to a woman getting roles. That's why Hailey Berry, uh, she's in a few things. Like, Hollywood uses certain black women in every situation. Tiffany Haddish, who's supposedly Jewish now. The, but, like, there, there's a lot to go through in this whole situation. I'm just going to go down the list because I'm just going to keep getting off track. Um. Always a bridesmaid, never the bride, always the mistress, never the wife type of thing. Like, and that's one reason why I cannot get behind Tyler Perry. Um, there's, it's a myth type thing. Like there, there are some people, there are some black people who will always go with the black person no matter what. But I'm that type of person that if I see that there's something going on and it's not too right, like I, I do not 
like R. Kelly, and I'm not going to just say his music's good because he's black. Like, there can be people who are in your culture that you do not accept, and it doesn't have to be a racial thing. That's just it. But in Hollywood, usually if the main character is black, she's usually like a Zendaya-type skin. Like, oh, and also I've got allergies, so if I keep sniveling, it's because of that. This is a bad allergy day. Um, anywho, um, black is something to be desired and not claimed in society. And this is how it goes into Jojo, Dojo Cat. Dojo Cat has light skin. Everyone has a responsibility to represent positively regardless of ethnicity due to human nature to judge subconsciously. So when Dojo Cat does certain things, it always puts her into a category. Like people are like, oh, I don't want to be put in. You're in a category already. Hate to break it to you. Hate to break it to you. But this is our society. Until we know how to fix our society, we need to know how to navigate through the crap holes. And that's what I'm doing. So when people talk about, I don't want to be put into a label, and especially someone who is way off kilter to the main norm, and the main norm is white, like man or woman. That's as close as you can get to normal. That's it. Anything that deviates off that, you are not normal. And you know how I know? And people are like, well, movies aren't real. Movies aren't real. That's great that movies aren't real. But it puts in the narrative. Everyone goes to watch movies. People subconsciously think from this movie, okay, this is how, and this is why I'm going into the Sarah Jane thing. Imitation of life. It imitates life. So art imitates life. You go and you see a movie. It's, it may be way off kilter. There may be explosions. It may be sci-fi. It may not be real. But there are hints of humanity within there that either the the director or the whoever had a hand into the story integrated in there always there's always a hint of someone's humanity within their artwork it's their perspective that's why it's so hardening it hurts to see every time there's a, a movie out um, the black dark skinned girl is either the enemy or she's buff or like buff to the sense of um, the legend of Korra I spoke about um, they made her really masculine for no reason it's like even Katara wasn't even that masculine like she had some built to her but it wasn't on the side of manly and then they try to sweep that under the rug and say, well, 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 she's bisexual. She was never going to be that. You made her that because you had nowhere to go from where you, what you did. And like I said, in my Legend of Korra is horrible video, straight up. Um, no, no place on this earth, nor any other earth, no alternate universe where a girl that was fighting with another girl for a guy is going to be with that girl no no universe no alternate universe no sub alternate universe but let me get back on this whole situation regardless of if um dojo cat openly admitted to it she benefits from being light-skinned so with that when i'm talking about imitation of life it's this movie that was redone it was a long it was an old movie that was in black and white that i really suggest you watch the, the in color one that was in 1959. It looks pretty good for 1959 because the other one was in 30 something and it was in black and white. I think it's got um, like words and stuff. Like it's not like Chaplin or whatever. But um, Imitation of Life is an oddly great movie with parts where you can't sit still, but it really does imitate life. Like this is the main story. Like what on earth a white woman like has to deal with sexism in the workplace and she's trying to attempt to be a respected actress without visiting the casting couch all while her boyfriend who or whoever whatever this guy is because i haven't seen this movie in a long time like i was trying to see it so i could like reference it for this 
video, but I had to do it quickly because people showed an interest in this movie and I really want to talk about it um, on Twitter. If you go to my Twitter, it's link in the description. Um, I have a post where I people were like, um, clans only, hashtag clans only or whatever because of Dojo Cat being in those little things with people who were white and people are, they're supposedly white supremacists. Um, it got me to thinking maybe I should talk about imitation of life because I feel like people are, because the comments, people defending her, the comments, people attacking her, like people, we're not on the same page. We all need to be on the same page because literally at the end of this, I'm going to explain that no matter how light you are or how dark you are, if you are not straight up with the features of what they're expecting, we're all in the same category. We're all in the same category. But I digress. <laughs> um, this girl trying to be an actress while her boyfriend is messing with her daughter, which the daughter's like, oh, I love him. And she's like, what? I love him. Like, that, that's really gross and disgusting. And what on earth? Who, who said that that was something great to put into the movie? But whatever. The side story is way better. And that's what I'm talking about. Side story. Annie, supposed friend of the like the girl who's trying to be an actress even though she's the maid she like is real interesting and you're like like the kardashians be like this is my friend and she like takes care of your kids it's really interesting and it's like how can you be friends with an employee like just like how you wouldn't be friends with someone who you, you worked at mcdonald's and that's your manager you would not be friends with like the king or something they they act like they're royalty so they want to be treated like royalty and the help isn't their friend but whatever they they love to make this whole thing people were upset that i was talking about the movie because i understand there's an undertone of um white savior but she really doesn't do anything to save her so i don't really understand why people um have that like, oh, that's what it is. Because I really don't see how she saved her at all. Like, the help actually has someone where she actually did something for her. Not for her life in the end. And that's another reason why I like the help. Because it's not really a white savior. It's more like a white, I helped you a little bit. Bye. Let me go on about my business type of situation. But I digress again. Annie has to deal with her daughter who passes for white which if you look on imdb or whatever um you'll notice that this woman was anglo-saxon she was not mixed her mom is not black her dad's not black nobody in her family was black so when you see her in the movie you're gonna say that's a white woman because she is a white woman but that's how it goes that's how it goes in hollywood and it's still like that They'll try to get the lightest skin kids, lightest skin girl, and the man can be dark. The man can be Asian. The man can be all types of Hispanic. But the girls have to have a certain look to them. They have to have rounded eyes if they're Asian. They have to have wider mouths, like thinner lips if they're black. They have to have less, like, everything. It literally is sh stripping you down to nothing. They, you basically have to be stripped down. And I think that's disgraceful. But back on to the actual plot. Like, it all starts really... Like, her daughter really just wants to disown her to, to be in a strip club. And that's really, really interesting. And spoiler for this movie, because I'm going to talk about spoilers. But not all of them, just some. You see it build up. Like, her mother goes to bring her daughter something that she forgot to school. And then everyone's looking at her like, Oh, we didn't know you were mixed with black. Look how it would be, it would be okay if your great, 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 great grandfather was black. Because, you know, you know, the slaves be raping. No, they don't. They were raped. But I digress on that too. It would be okay if you were there with the mammy, but... The, that's your mom that's your mama and she's like oh no 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 that's my mammy that's my mammy 
go go home go home mammy like she's really just wants to disown her mom so that she can fit into school that's something that is plausible in our society as we speak people think oh no that's not good yes it is yes yes it is it's plausible so when I see Dojo Cat and hear all these things, it doesn't surprise me. I'm not going to slander. I can't, you cannot take, if you're going to be coming forward to someone hostile, you cannot take their word. So I don't know why there's a, oh, Dojo Cat's canceled, not canceled, not, no, per, she's not going to get canceled. She is someone who fits the narrative of what they want for society they're gonna keep throwing money at her just like they throw cardi cardi b money just like they throw Nicki minaj money in a sense like you don't see like what's that girl's name misty elliott just received recognition she dark skinned she didn't wear the clothes that they wear Dojo Cat is very clad, and I'm not saying that that's a horrible thing. I'm saying that she fits into the narrative. She she fits into the raunchy narrative. That's what she does. And the whole thing with Beyonce being the protected one, she's light-skinned. She was the lightest-skinned in Destiny's Child. It does not surprise me. These are examples of things that make my... what. I'm saying tries to I'm trying to get you guys to understand it, like this movie really does explain what I mean rather than thanking her mother and accepting like what you know is fact like your mom is black it shouldn't be a surprise and if someone treats you differently then they, they weren't really there for you to begin with and you would rather know now than when it really matters in a situation where you need to rely on these people and then they're not going to because oh well you you that's not your mammy that's not your man like she is upset at her mom for even showing up and existing and then she goes, she tries to go, she, every turn she tries to be white. It's, uh, it's hilarious because she keeps getting told basically by the, the woman of the house, the white woman trying to be an actress, you ain't white. Like, and she's like, I'm white. And she literally cries and says she's white. Literally. Like, it's really mind blowing. It's mind blowing. Dark skinned black people nor dark skinned Hispanic and all Asians cannot secretly hide and jive till they die in this society. Like, they cannot do that. It's the people who have features that are more accepted and you, you can't tell me that that's not true. And another thing is they put less effort into like Tyler Perry with the whole thing with the wigs and all that. I think that is disgraceful and he should be ashamed he should not be putting lives about oh look at all this stuff i did on my own it's called hard work it's called hard work but you're going to tell the women that their hair needs to be done before they get on set when literally nobody else has that on like it's just not logical if you're going to have people and expect them to be back for your next movie when they're bombs each time like you should really reconsider how you are doing business I think that it's selfish of him to say that about the women, but his legacy was built on the back of a woman, um, Medea. Like, without Medea, his movies have less value, honestly. Medea was a, a pretty, char pretty dramatic caricature of a black woman, which adds to the whole colorism thing Tyler Perry is not that dark he's not that dark in the sense of when I say that dark I mean Idris Alba dark Idris Alba gets to walk around in Hollywood and do whatever he feels and he probably doesn't he probably doesn't I don't know his life but he is in more movies than more successful movies I might say than the darkest actress in Hollywood as we speak. It shouldn't be so wishy-washy. Like, how come Meryl Streep and all the 
the older women of Hollywood get to just go into a role and be thrown awards each time while Angela Bassett, Viola Davis, and other black women don't get credit. Like these shows, and she's even an executive producer of new shows. Angela Bassett deserves more. Like, the only time black people get rewarded in cinema is either when they're connected to a movie that was reward given the award to the director or the main character's sidelines, but not when it's actually warranted. It's the mammy syndrome. Like you, you either have to play a mammy and you get rewarded or you have to get naked, which is what Hailey Berry did. And that's how she got her award. And I just think that's insane. That's another thing because Hailey Berry's not even that dark and you see what she had to do. And that brings me back to Dojo Cat. Dojo Cat is very, she'll have very revealing clothing. And I wonder if she thinks she has to do that because without showing cleavage or showing whatever she's going to show, she doesn't get the accolades or she doesn't get the clicks. It's what, it's a pothole. You can either live in the pothole of society and accept what's going on, or you can figure out a way to navigate around that and still get the same result. You just have to try. You just have to try. So like, there's a story I have with someone who was like, I'm the way I am. Like there's one video on my channel with me in it because there's a lot of stuff over here and we're trying to get stuff packed and whatever. So I haven't been doing face cams, but I might do some soon. I just got to really figure out a way to where I'm going to put it. But when I was younger, I didn't get the concept of light and dark skin. I understood I'm black and that girl over there, she's black and she may be lighter black, but she's black and that's a genuine reaction. So subconsciously, as we are an adult, as we are given all these overlapping things to talk about and to think in our minds, we learn a certain way of reacting to things. So. If a kid grows up and sees their parent reacting to black people a certain way, crowding him behind the mom or the cart because you see a black person walking by, nine times out of ten when that kid gets older, he's either going to do the same thing with his kids or he's going to do something in a negative way. He's not even going to understand why because he was never told. They may never even be told that they're racist and they just do racist things and they use colorism to identify the good ones from the bad ones, like grapes. I had a black friend. She was like two shades lighter than me. And she would tell anyone that listened, anyone that listened, she was from Puerto Rico. She always had to say Puerto Rico. Like she, she had to put like something in it. Like she was straight off the boat from there. Like she literally had to say, I'm from Puerto Rico, yeah. Like she was black, she had black hair nothing her grandma was black uncle black mom black dad black black it wasn't when people talk about oh i'm from this i'm from there you can be happy from where you're from but you know good and well it may be third fourth fifth generation you can't be like i'm ninth generation italian and you're like not like okay you can talk about your ancestry but don't say that that's who exactly you are you've had about nine good mixtures of black to to just be like okay you can say that on whatever day holiday that celebrates but it's not you're you're black you're like it's not that big of a deal to say that but she wouldn't say she was black she would never say she was black like she was trying to hide it she tried to swindle her way into the light skin crowd i don't know like i saw her sisters and they didn't seem any lighter or darker, but I can't recall necessarily. I just remember she got really dark in the summer. So it's like, it didn't matter what she said, but men and women who most often are passing are pressured by society standards to give up their souls to fit in or have a proxim proximity to what is accepted, which is white. Well, 
white men and women sacrifice nothing for culture proximity. Like Kim Kardashian and all the Kardashian, the whole Kardashian clan, they have boyfriends and husbands who are basically like their proximity to blackness. And then they've got their kids who are also their proximity to blackness. Like, I think the person who gave the most respect to it was Chloe. I think that she did give a lot of respect. Like Courtney, she was with a white man. She I don't really she did that specifically to go against Chris. I already I have this whole thing that I really want to talk about them about. Like I just have this whole psychological breakdown of their whole family. But Courtney straight up was with Scott specifically to get on Chris's nerves. She despises her for having an affair on her original father second father the guy who um transitioned caitlin jenner now she was with her i don't know who was was she not who all i know is there's a black man in there somewhere and they all like black men and i don't think it's a preference i think it's a less than a fetish but more than a um an actual desire i don't know it's it's something so that they could be like, so they can get away with stuff, but still things are bad for everyone involved in this whole situation. Like the whole colorism where it reaches back around for color to colorism is like Kim's kids are either going to go one of two ways. And I've heard people talk about, oh, let people that are mixed be mixed and that they be in their own category they cannot be they cannot be because to the white person we all look the same we all not look as in facial it doesn't have to be that that downright in the sand it's just for we're all considered ethnic we're all considered not american that's why they say african-american they're like you're you're african before you're american and people use that as a pride thing it's to determine whether you belong here or not. And there were black people here before Africans were brought here as slaves. The black people that were already in America were already enslaved, either already enslaved before they came over here or they were killed off or they were shooed away so that they had to go somewhere else. It's like, all this is just adding up to a lot of things, but Dojo Cat is like Sarah Jane exactly to the T. She says supposedly she went into the chat rooms so that she could get a thicker skin. I think it was for her proximity and she had to give up her blackness to do so. And the lyric in her video or her music that she was talking about, I really, I saw it, but I really cannot recall what it was about. And it it's, doesn't matter. Like I, as someone like she, there's a spectrum, like I said. She is the one of the most accepted. Look at her nose, look at her mouth, look at her cheekbones, look at her hair, look at her skin, because they sure are. Look at her skin. Me, as a, as a more on the Reese's cup side of blackness, I wouldn't be going in chat rooms where there were white supremacists or people who did not like me that's bad behavior that's unacceptable behavior and it's not it's half the fact that it's white supremacists the other half is just it's not it's not psychologically sound it doesn't make any sense logically and psychologically because you're just hurting yourself jabs i've been in a situation where i've had friends that were like oh if you can't handle it then you probably don't have a thick enough skin and when I realized that that was just bad behavior to stay around people who are always bringing you down. I stopped talking to them. That's growth. If she is still in these chat rooms from whenever she started, she is not grown. She isn't growing backwards if this is a new thing. I don't know how new this is. I don't know how old it is. I just know that if she is in chat rooms with people who are white supremacists or people who don't even identify as white supremacists, it could literally be anything that's against her if it's a it's a uh, incel place or whatever people were saying they were incels when i saw a clip or a picture where there was a girl in there so i really don't know what 
the whole story is. I just know that if it is happening, it's not, it's not a, oh, cancel. It's a, she literally is ill and she needs to either go get help if she cannot take herself out of it because it's not healthy to be around people who are constantly trying like, and then you calling them friend is really twisted for you to think that they're your friends. They're getting something from you. And this is gossip hearsay. And I'm not using this against her to make hate mob. I'm using this so that it's put into perspective where her mind is. But she really needs to not. And I, I've never did. I never knew who Dojo Cat was until I saw the, the live where she had her bra really low and it looked, it looked like she wasn't wearing one. It looked like a one piece and she was like snorting, sniffing up. And it sounded to me as if she was on cocaine, but I don't know. I can't say for sure. That's what it is. But she had all the characteristics of someone who was either on it or coming off of it. She was going, she was going somewhere and she kept like stopping and laughing and looking serious and scared. And it was kind of strange. So when I saw the whole thing where she's in these, like, there's no excuse for you being in, you can explain yourself without it excusing what you have done. And that's what people don't understand. You can say, this is how A got to be. Like, you can slap somebody in the face and they're like, how'd you, well, I put my hand up and I slapped them. But why? Well, I don't know. You do know. You do know why you slapped them you you can't well, well he stole something from me okay so you can explain that you slapped him because you he stole something from you but you cannot say that that is okay that i slap him because something was taken from me you can explain yourself without excusing because people seem to think that oh i just like with the whole this is Going into another thing, um, Danielle Brogoli, she says, oh, I act this way because I was a, like, you can explain yourself without giving excuse to your actions and you cannot keep doing it. Once you know the problem, you fix it. Just like if there's something wrong with you physically, if it stops you from going to your job, your school, something that really makes you want to get up in the morning, like even play games to eat anything you go get it fixed do you not if your toe is stubbed if there is if you have a splinter do you not get tweezers and pull it out why would you leave your emotional and psychological splinter inside your brain and just say well oh it was there because i did this like oh the splinter was only there because i swept against some wood okay you can explain that how it got there and then fix it and you can't just keep putting your hand on that wooden piece because you already know that you're going to splint her you already know so why on earth are you still doing the same stuff and that's another thing with cancel culture that people don't get if somebody if like this is how it was supposed to be i believe in getting rid of somebody like the, the by getting rid of I don't mean kill maim harm anything like that Roseanne Barr was canceled Roseanne Barr was canceled the only reason why her stuff's not off the show is because everybody else who wants to get a paycheck from them re-rolling old good shows it still has to be on there I don't even know if the Cosby show is still on there but you know what Roseanne was canceled canceled not a single one of these people who go, Twitter shouldn't be a place where people think get their news. It's an, there's another thing. Twitter should be a place where people share their opinions and that's it. It shouldn't be a place where people get their hot, steamy, fresh news. Because nine times out of 10, it's hearsay. It's just as if you went over to your neighbor and said this, that, and the other. It's the same thing, except on a larger scale. That's it. So using Twitter as a place to get your news or people who are like with if it's not just for hey went golfing today i really don't want to hear that oh well we're going to war it shouldn't be a place where we get 
knowledge for reality, real things. It should just be for a p- opinions, opinions, but it's not. It's become a news outlet for people to just grab and say, oh, hashtag canceled, hashtag this person's canceled. I hate when I see it go because I know that that person's not getting canceled. Like there's no hope for actual progression. The pothole keeps getting bigger because you guys keep saying, oh, cancel, you're making the people who are saying cancel culture is horrible, the narrative. When cancel, true people getting canceled should still exist because why is it that people can get money and still be problematic in our society? Why is that? Why do, why do they get to get it so easily just to slap on the wrist? And especially since people who don't fall in line with the protected order in whatever part of society we're in at the time, like the timeline, don't get that. They get the shaft. Like Mel Gibson, he did all that he did and he still gets money to this day because he's, he's a little hothead man and no one wants to get him upset. Literally, you can look at, and people are like, well, but his, his movies are good. I can say Johnny Depp's movies are great, except when he doesn't know his lines and he has it fed through his earpiece. And maybe he needed, he was up all night looking over documents for a divorce. All I know about that is all I'm going to say is he was with the mistress. He gets a mistress end. If you go out of your marriage and you're not in an open marriage and it's not discussed and it's not an accepted thing by both parties, you get whatever you get when you go with the mistress. That's what you get. So him trying to make people feel bad and sorry and then the whole thing where he's hashtag canceled, he was not canceled. He was still getting money. He's still getting money to this day. He was never canceled. So for people to be like, haha, now it's Amber's turn to get canceled. She's really gonna get canceled. She's really not gonna get jobs. And she may, she may get some, some jobs because she falls in the category of white woman. So they're both going to stay where they're going to be. And she may go down a little bit less than him because she's less beloved. She made less movies that people could say, oh, he's a great person because he makes great movies. You can be a scum person. Like if you watch any show with prisoners that have murdered people, ate people, shot people, stabbed people, raped people, they will, they will have attributes that look like they could be a human being that could go back into our society. And that's what's scary because there are people who do not go into the criminal system and that are free until they're dead and they're doing horrible things and they're getting away with it. But because they make great movies, because they do great things and it's so good People cannot look past that. And then when people do look past it, oh, like you can't, you can, no, because just because you make a great movie, because you make great art, doesn't mean you are contributing to our society enough for us to say, you know what? Just because you did this, just because you did that, just because you have this long list of things that you did horrible, you should still be our president. You should still be in movies. You should still be getting jobs. Like, that's what I don't get. And with this whole, this whole dojo thing, with the whole canceled thing, I don't think she should be canceled. I think she should be helped. I think she's a black woman who, if she, if these allegations are true, that is so sad that she thinks she needs to be in a white supremacist lobby to get a thicker skin. And it's hilarious to think that this light-skinned girl thinks she needs to go with the white supremacists and hear that so that she gets a thicker skin when one shade darker than her gets treated twice as bad. If she's ever gotten any racial slur sent to her, her way, any darker-skinned woman has had it worse than her. And they're not in white supremacist lobbies. And they're not talking to KKK members. They're not talking to um, incels. They're not talking to anyone like that. They're not making it a mission for them to be in a place where they're gathering and they're talking and discussing just their life. 
Nobody is doing that. And if you are doing that, it's, it is akin to slitting your wrists to where you don't die. It is akin to you cutting yourself. It is akin to you taking pills. It is akin to you slowly killing yourself. And that's what I don't understand about Doja Cat. If what she is saying is true and she only went in there to get a thicker skin, that is not how you get a thicker skin. How you get a thicker skin is dealing with what comes to you naturally, not making these situations in which you are put in the position to hear it. You may go to a party and you may hear it and that's not you putting yourself in that position. You were going to a party to have fun. You are not going into no white supremacist lobby chat room to have fun. And if you are having fun, then you are also adding to the Sarah Jane narrative. Either way, something needs to get fixed because it's not just Dojo Cat. She's just an example that is fresh in everyone's mind. Look at her and look at any other darker skinned woman. She has no business being in a chat room to get a thicker skin. She's already been given, the, you've got people from that chat room defending her. They wouldn't be defending someone darker than her. They wouldn't if that is the situation, if that it is. Like, if it is, then that is sad and comical at the same time. All in all, I talked about a lot of things. Um, a lot of things I deviated from the actual list of things I wanted to talk about. But honestly, why, if you are a part of this, if you have any horse in the race, if you're a black woman, if you're a black man because she's part black, you are a part of the situation. If you're any ethnicity, uh, like any ethnicity, I really don't care what ethnicity, you have to watch Imitation of Life. It is on YouTube. It is um, for buy on cable. It's a really good movie that will stick with you. It's not a, a white savior. This is the good white person in the world. It's not like that. She literally, the black woman in this movie literally is basically her maid. She's basically serving the food. She is not her friend. They claim that they're friends just because they talk in the kitchen and giggle. But they're not friends. They have two different lives. And both of them have two different endings. And I really don't want to spoil the whole ending, but it's really sad. And it just goes to show. In like, art imitates life. It's like imitation of life. It makes complete sense that it's called that. Because I can I remember in my past, colorism coming into play and reasons why I was treated a certain way and a reason why other people were treated a certain way and it also comes into play of how you act what you sound like what I sound like it's more acceptable than this that these and those it's all about how curly your hair is it's not something that is always done here and it's like okay that like like I said, I don't think people are really teaching their kids anymore. There may be people that are teaching their kids, like the ABCs and, oh, racist. But I'm really thinking that it's mostly psychological at this point. They are they see their parents do something, therefore they, they re, redo it when they're adults. Like they just fall into line and we need to stop falling in potholes. Dojo Cat is one example just one example. And I told you, the two women who got awards, one was a mammy and one was nude. They were both black women. Where's Angela Bassett's wins? Where are her wins? Like, there are so many black women who don't get the accolades. Like, dude, honestly, Joaquin Phoenix, I don't know what he is. He could be Hispanic for all I know. He looks passing everyone looks at him and says he is white he is passing he falls in the category of dojo cat who is passing that's just what it is psychologically and everyone standing in ovation for 
that movie when it was not worth that all that it was not I've seen movies that deserved a standing innovation that did not receive one and if we're going to be that dramatic with a movie that didn't even have Batman in it I think that's insane there have been movies that needed a standing innovation and did not receive one I believe based on that he it's great that he I don't know if it's something more to do with how long he's been playing movie or doing whatever. I really don't know the situation with that. I don't know if it was because he had a party and everyone was like, oh, that's so cool. You had a cool party. But I watched Joker and it was not worth all that standing innovation. It was cool. It was funny. It was interesting. But what on actual earth? Um... I'm done. There are a lot of Sarah Janes in this world. Um, there are a lot of passing. There are a lot of women that just keep getting roles because of what they look like and how they act. Whether it be the ghetto girl that everyone needs or the cutie, polite girl that is okay to kiki with. All I know is you need to watch Imitation of Life 1959. It is a really good looking for the fact that it's so old. I really believe that there needs to be an updated version of this. I, I really would like to see someone try to handle this, but I'm done talking about Dojo Cat and passing colorism. I just really, I really felt like this, this um, video needed to be made because a lot of people saw interest in this movie and I wanted to give a little explanation, a little background, and then how it relates to what's going on in, in society and cancel culture and whatever, but done.